Peace, peace. What's up, my niggas, man? What's good? Now, before you all start going off saying, oh, he called me a nigga, let me let, me let you guys know that when I speak that divine vibration, when I call you a nigga, regardless of the race, regardless to, to what color, if you have that nigga spirit in you, I speak those words in divine elevation. So when I call you a nigga, your divine essence must be raised to that vibration. So that means, obviously, to those who may not know, divine aspect of kings, queens, those who are, are emperors, those who are, are gods and goddesses over their divine mind. Obviously, nigga, naga, uh, divine aspect of snake, the kundalini, also meaning uh, um, divine fire, divine life that raises up the greater knowledge of self, reaching the pineal gland, illumination, the uraeus of the old Egyptian, Egyptian headrest, uh, headdress um, that represents illumination. So whenever I call you a nigga, know that I'm speaking to your God self and I'm raising you up to the level that I see myself as, which is the source which I, I uh, uh, recognize you and I, I uh, respect you as. So welcome, my niggas. Okay, so um, today's video is going to be on Nama. I wanted to talk about Nama because she is one of the greater aspects of the goddess, of the divine black woman, the divine black goddess that, that um, I revere and I love so much. Um, and so I wanted to talk about her and my experiences with her and how to, to communicate and get in contact with Nama as a projection of yourself and how to bring out those energies, those aspects of Nama within you so you can utilize them um, to, to, to elevate and to um, bring yourself to greater heights in your magic, your sorcery, your, your daily life, your sex, your sex life, um, to improve your, your vampirism, to improve the many different aspects that Nama covers. Okay, so let me begin by by reading some things that um, I found off of, off of the internet about Nama. There's not really much out there as far as Nama. When you wiki Nama or when you Google Nama, it talks about her uh, demonic aspect, right? Which is true, but that's just only a key, a gateway. As I always talk about gateways um, to, to give you greater knowledge um, or to, to spark an interest in order for you to go in deeper. So it's like basically um, as a few of our, our elders and great lecturers talked about, um, um, Brother Panic in, in particular, it's like when, you know, uh, back in the day, when you go to a temple, uh, a sacred temple, and say, for instance, you see the Baphomet at, at the gates, right, at the entrance, that's only the first level of, of, of the, the inner temple or the inner knowledge itself. You have to go past your own fears. You have to go past that veil, which is the, the entrance way through Baphomet to get into the greater aspects, the secrets and the, the, um, the inner mysteries of Baphomet and of that temple. So it's like that with Nama. Nama is just only a template. You always hear me say that these deities, these spirits, these particular aspects are templates. That's what they are. Do not stop, right? My suggestion, I'm always going to give you guys suggestions about how you can improve your magic, right? Um, listen closely. The spirits that you work with are only templates, right? Take them as, as gateways, as divine gateways to, to access deeper, access, uh, access deeper um, aspects of the knowledge that you're, you're striving to work for. So that means you have to work past your fears, which the ego will present to you because the ego sees these images, first of all, as being scary, as being unknown, as being foreign to it, because it's not an image that you're used to. It's an image that reflects and, and, and projects what the divine mind truly looks like, right? If it was described in a form that is, is more chaotic in nature, okay? So you have to get past the fear. That's the first step. Get past the fear of, of looking at the images of these spirits, of these deities, of whatever it is, as, as something that is the end-all, be-all. Use these as gateways. Now, the next portion of that is to, to, to go into meditation. That's the next step. So once you realize that you faced your fears, right, you've seen the image of Nama. You've seen the image of Lilith, 
of Aishith Zanunum of Agrat Bat Malat. You then take those greater aspects, you step beyond the fears of those, those gates that you recognize that these scary images are there, then you meditate on them. What's going to happen through the meditation is the reflection of your own divine mind will start to release this information that's personal and customized to you as a divine source, as God, as you see it, right? Not as the next person, not as the next man or the next woman, but as you see it. And then what you do is you copy and you log that information because that's the information that's key aspects and key points to you and you alone. Okay. And then what you do with that information is whatever your, your prerogative, you can use it to enhance your life. You can use it to control others. You can do whatever you want, but if you're on a true divine left hand path, okay, you're going to move beyond the aspects of trying to control people, of trying to dominate people. Okay. And I need to get that out there. Because, yes, there is divine aspects of, of the left-hand path where you go about controlling, dominating, suppressing, um, um, oppressing people with your magic and your mind and stuff like that. That's fine and dandy. But that keeps you at a stagnated perspective of your own divine mind. You get so caught up in that, right, that, that you get stuck there. And that's all that you think about, okay? I'm speaking from experience, okay? I'm speaking about how that was an illusion that I had to get past of, of divine aspects of vampirism, uh, um, which I had to learn to control my vampirism like my man's rogue titan. He has real divine control over his vampirism. And I salute him, and I, I tip my hat off for him, which is, a, you know, he's an excellent, um, I see him as a god of that perspective, of that, that, that path. So if you want to know more knowledge about uh, uh, buying aspects of vampirism. Check his video. Check his check his videos and check his page out. Anyway, I got stuck in that right, and it was constantly an aspect of how can I control people? How can I dominate people? How can I manipulate people? How can I do this and that with other people instead of focusing on how I can use and utilize those aspects of my greater divine deific self to improve my life. And once I started to do that, I started to break beyond and break past the barriers of my own mind by pushing myself through my own fears. Because then I was fo focused and forced to focus on me. By focusing on me, brought my energy inward, right? And then I started to project outward, okay? I don't, I don't bring in, right? I don't bring in. I don't devour in that way. I devour in a totally different way, okay? And so I, I started to project Though that those aspects of the lessons that I learned in my everyday life, which is projected invisibly amongst all the visible bullshit that you'll see, right? Which disguises it. So once I started to focus on me, then I realized like, shit, man, why am I focusing my divine energy on trying to dominate and control people? That's wasting my energy. Let me start devouring myself. Let me start using rituals and magic on dominating myself. Let me see what that feels like for me. Right. And so I started using all these aspects of vampirism on myself, of destruction on myself, of death on myself, of, of domination and control on myself, of specific aspects of enslavement to place boundaries on myself, to force myself to fight with myself. In other words, to force my conscious mind to realize that there were forms of enslavement and boundaries and then focusing on my divine mind. To push through and to break through those boundaries, making me stronger. The Ouroboros within me being activated, okay? And then forcing myself to, to move further and higher and higher in greater aspects of this divine knowledge. So I'm giving you guys the real deal shit here, okay? This is what I've done to help improve my path. And I'm giving it to you guys, okay? And so once you start focusing on those aspects of yourself and utilizing that aspect instead of trying to focus outwardly, inwardly, will greater improve your magic, your sorcery, your sex life, your divine mind, whatever it is, okay? And you release those fears and you let them go, okay? So now, I'm going to talk about what who who Nama is and, and, and what aspect she has been seen in. Now, there's not much on the internet, okay? Um, I've, I obviously, I go to Wiki because Wiki is one of those go-to sites. It's like a gateway to... to uh, free information okay even though it's open source anybody could, could uh, uh edit it anybody could add to it or take away from it um with the with the wikipedia account 
But you have to take that into account that there's still going to be certain aspects of divine truth within that. You have to find those aspects within yourself. That's where you, sh you, you turn your mind on, you activate your mind, you activate your melanin, and you, you ask the questions internally. Say, okay, what are the deeper, deeper secrets of this information? This is what they say about Nama on Wikipedia. Nama, Genesis. Nama is an individual mentioned in the Hebrew Bible in Genesis 4.22, a descendant of Cain, right? Now, Cain, obviously, now we're going to break this down, okay, just from this little bit of information here. Cain obviously represents Set, represents the adversary, okay? So they're, they're saying that Nama here is, is a de demonic adversary, a descendant uh, uh, of Satan, which is herself. She's a de descendant of herself because the divine black woman, the divine black goddess, I'm talking about black women, are, are descendants of themselves as divine black, uh, divine black goddess in physical form, okay? So she is a descendant of Cain. She was the only mentioned daughter of Lamech and Zilla, and the youngest mentioned child. Her brother was Tubal Cain, which uh, is another form of, of Satan here, okay? Um, while Jabal and Jubal were her half brothers, sons, Lamech's, Lamech's other wife, Ada. So obviously, you have to go in and see what those particular spirits represent according to the Bible and the hidden information that they're get, giving you, okay? Now, um, born Nama. Other names, Nama. Uh, spouses, Noah. Okay? Um, which Noah is a form of Moses, in a way, because um, floods, he controls the floods, I think, personally. Um, I will have to look more into that, but more aspects of Noah. Uh, 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 and that divine aspect. Don't quote me on that, okay? <laughs> um, says, Golden Windham notes that the reason she should be picked out for special mention remains obscure, while R.R. R. Wilson suggests that the narrator, narrator simply wished to offer a balanced genealogy by noting that both Lamech's wives had two children. The early Jewish Midrash, Genesis, Rabbah 2.3, identifies this Nama, the daughter of Lamech and sister of Tubal Cain, as the wife of Noah. She, Rashi's commentary on Genesis 4-2-2, while some Jewish traditions associate her with singing. So, what they're telling you is that when you sing, you activate an aspect of Nama, which is the, 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 the spoken word, the spoken vibration of God, which is the spoken aspect of yourself, which is a, a form of freedom, okay? The form of... of, of Lilith freeing herself, okay, because she is an aspect of Lilith. Lilith represents the uh, divine aspect of freedom within the divine feminine. Freeing your mind, your subconscious mind, not just on the physical plane, not just when it comes to feminism. We're talking about all aspects of the divine, divine feminine, okay? We're talking about the subconscious mind aspect. We're talking about um, the aspect of, of working with nature, your pure nature, your divine nature is the divine feminine and in, in, in representing itself, okay? In representation. It says, the Nama mentioned in the Bible. See, they're telling you right here that the Nama mentioned in the Bible is a Canaanite. So that there mean, this means that there is another Nama that they're not talking about, okay? It says, a descendant in the lineage of Cain, Satan, uh, Set, right? However, a, a set, Sethite, see, a Sethite. So they're letting you know that, that she is connected to Seth, right? To Set, to Satan, to uh, Shatan, to, to, to the divine black aspect of herself, right? And we're going to talk about how, I'm going to talk about how this here was a domestication of the divine black woman's aspect of Nama because divine, because I'm getting ahead of myself here because Nama represents the wild uh, uh, divine nature of, of her, her wild natural self. So um, if, you, if you think about it, she represents Oya in a lot of ways, okay? She is Oya in a lot of ways. Nama is named as the wife of Noah, uh, Noah 
and the daughter of Enoch, Noah's grandfather, in a mid medieval midrash. The 17th century theologian John Gill mentioned the theory which identified Naamah instead with the name of the wife of Ham, son of Noah, who he believed may become confused with Noah's wife. Um, see, see wives, blah, 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 blah. So you see that, that Noah, which we could equip, uh, which we can equivalent to, to, to Adam, okay? Because Noah, right, um, and his wife, Nama, Nama being the aspect of Lilith, being more, more docile, being more, uh, uh, domesticated, um, and, and she being the, the wife of Adam, right? Noah being the role of Adam as a form of the creator. So if you think about it, when the flood hit, right, Noah had to bring two of each animal on, on the ship, right? The, the ship, obviously, the vesica Pisces, the vagina, okay? When he brought those two animals, which means uh, duplicity, right? It means divine nature of left and right. Uh, it means... Uh, uh, dark and light polarities brought together. Adam, right, which represents um, atom, which which is a uh, 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 molecular structure, right, which is you know what the carbon-based structure that you're in. Then in the in the place in the role of Noah means that that he is the creative di divine force entering the vesica Pisces, the vagina, right. And taking two of of each uh, animal, the lower nature, um, and, and basically after the floods, right, uh, the subconscious mind, the waters of noon, and then then actually after the floods subsided, subsided, allowed those animals to to go out and to to uh, reproduce and stuff like that. But Noah, being a guiding force. Uh, a creative force behind guiding the the um, the bringing together of those two two uh, aspects, the masculine and and and, and, and uh, feminine aspects together as one. So Noah can be considered to be a form of Adam in a way. If you guys get what I'm saying, this is how I put things together to bring about greater revelation in myself. And then I I do the research, okay. So I'll, I'll write this stuff down, how it's, how it's brought to my mind, how it's elevated, how it's activated. And then I'll go back and I'll research it to ensure if I'm right or not. OK, and if I'm not if I'm not right, I'll change it because I'm challenging myself. I'm challenging my mind. I'm, I don't I'm not afraid to make mistakes and I'm not afraid to be wrong because it's my mind that makes things right regardless. OK, and so in the concept of Nama, Nama being a lord and more docile aspect of Lilith can be considered to be Lilith in the more docile aspect, married to um, married to Adam, right? Or ma married to Noah, which Noah would be equivalent to Adam, okay? Except for in this form of, of Nama, or this form of Lilith, which is Nama, she's married to him. Whereas Vice Lilith split from Adam because of the fact that he wanted to suppress her, which means that it's nothing more than the conscious mind suppressing the subconscious mind. That's all. That's all that means when we're talking about Lilith leaving at leaving um, the Garden of Eden, Eden, because which is Eden, the divine mind, because Adam wanted to suppress her. Adam being the conscious mind suppressing the subconscious mind. OK, you guys got to got to put the stuff together for yourself as well to do the work. OK, so now I'm looking at Nama according to her clip -offic aspect, right, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, which I fucking love Nama, man. Nama or Nama uh, is Hebrew for pleasant, a demon described in the Zohar, foundational work of Jewish mysticism. Okay, says Nama appears in the Zohar as one of the mates of the archangel Samael. Okay, Samael is the, the angel of death, uh, a, a spiritual form of angelic form of Saturn, of Satan, 
of the divine black woman, of the divine black man, of our divine black mind. Okay, an angel of protection and an angel of death. Okay, Samael is that that guiding force that can be aggressive, or he can be helpful, depending on how that person works with Samael and how that person sees Samael and projects Samael's energy. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I see a heart. <laughs> oh, pretty awesome. Um. Searching for food, but um, yeah. So according to how you decide to work with Samael, he can be worked with from either either angle. Okay, um. So she is a mate of Samael. Samael obviously is another manifested form of Lucifer. Okay, the light bringer, which uh uh um, Lilith is married to Lucifer. Okay, she is married to Lucifer. Um, she's also married to, to Asmodeus, okay, which Nama is tied to Asmodeus by being Asmodeus's mother or Asmodeus, depending on how you, how you look at it. Okay. Samael is also Satan. Okay. And, 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 uh, uh his most divine aspect or uh, uh, divine aspect of the all. And obviously Satan is the all, which is both. Uh, um, androgynous in nature, masculine and feminine. Okay, so, um, so basically, Samael. She, along with her cohort Lilith, causes. Listen to this. She causes epilepsy in children. Okay, so if your children are having seizures, okay, if you are having trouble with your children having seizures. You can work with Nama in her reverse aspect, okay? Which means you can go to Nama, which is an aspect of you, okay? Remember, uh, I'm going I'm to I'm pound, pound this into you guys' head. I'm going to continue to talk about this. She's not just some goddess that's outside of you, okay? Just because you get an image, you see it. It's an image that's a reflection of something that's in you that's projecting outward, that you're recognizing as yourself in physical form of what you would look like if you were that demonic energy and entity in physical form okay so if your children are having seizures epileptic seizures are are, are having cause cause causation of epilepsy go to nama within yourself meditate on nama and tell nama to remove that shit okay because you're talking to your divine mind say nama remove the fucking epilepsy on my child okay clear that shit out the reason why you are being rough and aggressive with nama because rough and aggressive is nama's nature Okay, you're talking to the most avatistic, raw, un unrefined aspect of yourself. That activates the energy within you. That activates the ancestors within you that represents Nama. That, that activates the, the divine aspect of your chaos mind, your chaotic mind, your melanated mind that is Nama. And that activates that, that rough tone is aligned with Nama's energy, which at that point you become Nama. You are Nama because you're switching on and, and because emotion is involved because you don't want your child to have epileptic seizures. You don't want your child to be plagued with epilepsy. Activate, activates her. Okay, instantaneously and she gets to work. From that point, she automatically removes that, that nature of epilepsy and your child is cleared. But you have to have faith in this, okay? It says... Causes epilepsy in children. After Cain kills Abel, okay, Adam separates from Eve for 130 years. During this time, Lilith and Nama visit him and bear his demonic children who become plagues of mankind. Zohar 376B77A. In another story from the Zohar, Nama corrupts Uzzah. And Azazel, Zohar, Genesis, chapter 22, I think. And so what they're talking about here is um, after Cain, Satan, subconscious mind, set, right, kills Osiris, okay? Adam separates from Eve. Other way around. Eve separates from Adam. Because you got to look at it, right? Eve is the more domesticated version of Lilith, okay? What Eve, what, what Lilith represents, what Eve represents, right, is she represents what 
what happens when the divine black woman's mind has been suppressed. Okay. When your mind, your divine mind is suppressed, you all, you become Eve, which is another form of your energy. Take back your energy. Don't look at Eve as being a, a adver adversarial force outside of yourself, but something to be feared. Eve is your energy. Take back your energy of Eve. Okay, divine black woman. This is your motherfucking energy. Take back your energy. That's your energy too. Except for Eve represents your more docile, domesticated version of yourself. When you became docile and domesticated, you became Eve from Lilith, okay? And so you have two aspects of the same coin. You have the darker aspect, the divine aspect, which is Lilith, okay? And then you have the, the um, divine aspect, which is the lighter aspect, which is Eve. Both you, all you. So take that back. So Adam separates from Eve for 130 years, okay? 13, okay? Look at it. Take the zero off. 13. 13, number of mastery. Okay? You got to look at it. Number of mastery. Three and one, four. Four, stability. Okay? Stable. Cycle. Stability represents the Ouroboros. Represents the cycle. Four pillars. Four elements. Which means that Eve, from Lilith from, to Eve, locked down into four elements. Okay? Put your divine mind to use, people. Locked down into four elements. Okay? Once she was locked down, she became Eve. That's because that that goes from you being from Lilith, free, freedom, free aspect of your divine mind, to being locked in to humanity through the four four elements of, of becoming then the docile version of Eve. Okay? During this time, Lilith and Nama visit him and bear his demonic children. Lilith being the gateway. Lilith is automatically the gateway of your divine self, your divine mind. He is the raw, abatistic, free aspect of who you are and what you are. When there are no boundaries, no limitations, no enslavements, no subjugation. Okay, when you're working with your Lilith energy, and I'm not talking about that, that bullshit-ass feminism, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. When I say bullshit ass feminism, I'm talking about an aspect of human humanity and human rights where we're talking about, you know, you want to just work feminism from an aspect of controlling men. OK, it doesn't work like that. If you're going to work feminism, you, from my opinion, you need to work with feminism to raise up the div divine masculine aspect in yourself. OK, when you work with the divine masculine aspect of yourself, you're raising up. From you recognizing your own divine feminine nature, right, which is true f uh, feminism, to raise up the divine masculine aspect of yourself, which automatically raises up your divine masculine counterpart, which is the man that you're with. So he becomes equal with you, which is what Lilith's about. Lilith's about becoming equal with Adam because he did not want to become equal with her. He wanted to suppress her. The, the, the conscious mind wanted to suppress the subconscious mind. She left him. She left his ass. She said, fuck you. I'm not I'm not going to be subjugated to you. I'm not going to sit under you. Subconscious mind sitting under the conscious mind. I'm going to leave you and I'm going to separate from you. So, separation means this, uh, which means the two divine natures separating masculine and feminine separating, becoming male and female, becoming two polarities. OK, when they talk about Adam and 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 Lilla splitting up, they're talking about the splitting up. Of the two divine natures or the two divine polarities masculine and feminine okay you're splitting up between those two they're they're giving you that that allegory they're giving you that that symbolism there okay that's all it means it doesn't mean that an actual woman actually uh uh, uh left a man because he tried to suppress it we're talking about or if you talk about metaphysics magically this is what this shit means you got to put this shit together right so it means that she, as divine, ma uh, divine feminine aspect, divine mind, subconscious mind, splitting from the conscious mind, becoming the divine aspect of the two polarities, masculine and feminine. Uh, uh, feminine. Okay. Uh, uh, during this time, Lilith and Nama vis visit him and bear his demonic children. So what that means is that we're talking about subconscious mind which is Lilith, divine black woman, the all, right? Which 
and and don't don't get me wrong. Yes, I you know I am talking about divine black woman, but this divine black nature is within all women. All women doesn't matter what color you are. You have this melanated aspect in you to a certain extent, except for the divine black mother, my divine black mother, my divine black wife, my divine black sister, my divine black whore. Okay, because Lilith is divine whore as well too. Are uh. uh is a representation of her own divine black mind, which means she's in sync and synchronized with who and what she is. When it comes to the other aspects of, uh, of people that are not of the color of, of black or, or black, then it means that uh, those aspects lie dormant to a certain extent, to a certain perspective within themselves, within themselves to a certain extent. Okay, so you're the, the melanin, the divine black aspect of, of Lilith, of the divine black mind, is in you to a certain extent. Okay, it's just that the divine black woman, which is the all, which is divine mother, which cannot be taken away, that's who she is, is the beginning and the end of it all. You are just an aspect of the divine black mother. Okay, you have to recognize your position as that. You have to recognize that that's genetically how it is. That's mentally how it is. That's physically how it is. That's spiritually how it is. That's magically how it is. Okay, that's the natural order of things. Okay, so, but it's not to belittle you. I'm not saying this to belittle anybody who's not of a black skin tone. Okay, so don't get me, don't get me twisted and be like, oh, well, he's just male chauvinist. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you how it is, right? You can get books and do research and stuff, and that's exactly how it is, okay? Not, now, like I said, you have that divine black aspect in you because you come from her. You have that, 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 that melanated aspect, that divine black mind in you. You just have to raise it up to a certain vibration by first recognizing who she is, the divine black mother, divine black mo mo woman, and who you are, and work to activate those melanated aspects in you, right? By not suppressing, okay? So, you know, uh, I'm going to talk about this, okay, just real quick. So, if you're going to be a feminist, you're not suppressing your conscious mind, right, which is the masculine aspect of you. We're not talking about the male representation or the male symbolism of what your masculine aspect represents, okay? We're not talking about that. When you're talking about feminism from a humanistic standpoint, you're talking about suppressing the divine masculine aspect in you because you don't understand that the divine masculine aspect in you represents your own conscious mind. It represents your own divine masculinity, not the man before you with a dick swinging between his legs. He's just a symbol of that. Now, and you got to keep in mind that if you are suppressing your own masculine, divine masculine nature, what are you going to be doing? What are you going to be projecting to the, to the divine masculine aspect that projects itself outward in the form of a man. You're going to be suppressing him as well too, which in turn feeds that cycle of you suppressing your own divine conscious mind. Okay, which means that you can't get any further, which means you become confused and you suppress your own emotions because now you're feeding into the adversarial flow, Satan, Lucifer, right, Set. And you're constantly putting yourself under your own divine nature. And because the mind makes real what it believes, you are now believing that this divine masculine aspect is suppressing you, which you know what happens? You create that reality. And guess what he does? He does. Okay. And I'm giving you guys the hardcore truth. This is what it is. Okay. So you have to look at feminism, not from a perspective of suppressing and controlling the masculine aspect in you, right? And the masculine aspect that's uh, 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 represented and symbolized in the man who does have a dick swinging between his legs. What it means is that you recognize yourself as divine aspect of the mother, Lilith, and you represent that freedom to express your femininity in whatever forms it comes in. That's why the divine goddess, the divine black mother comes in many different aspects. And I love her. Mwah. Love to you, my divine black mother. Okay. And you have the many different aspects and you raise those aspects up and then you start to cultivate those aspects in whatever it be. It could be a dancer. It could be a prostitute. It could be a singer. It could be an artist. It could be whatever, whatever is expressed as your personal freedom. Okay. 
you raise that up. And obviously you have these templated energies, right? Such as Nama, Lilith, Isis, I Aisha Zanunum, and Agra Bat Malat to represent those divine aspects, those divine natures, uh templated natures of what you look like at that those gate at as gateways, though that uh gateway energy that you can go through now to activate those energies of what they represent within you that now are customized to you of how you're going to project it now now to get into um, because i'm gonna go on but i just want to get these things out of the way so you have an understanding a clear understanding of what we're dealing with here okay and so when you go through the gateways of nama aisha zanunum agrapa malat and lilith they're templated energies which then when you do the work when you do the meditation and you activate these energies within yourself you then uh, cultivate a divine aspect of yourself, a divine understanding of yourself, okay? Um, that then raises up a particular perspective of who you are and of what you are, okay? That are that's customized to you. So you're not you're not going to 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 stick with the um, templated versions of what you've begun to meditate on is going to change and morph the form of alchemy, alchemical transmutation. Go with it. Let go of that fear of allowing yourself to transform into whatever aspect of the divine goddess she is representing through these templated energies as gateways. Learn to let go. Okay. Learn to free yourself. This is what Lila is about. Okay. And I'm giving you the real deal. Because I've worked with Lilith. I, I, um, I work with Lilith. I love Lilith. She is my divine mother. And, and we have a very close tie. Okay. And so basically, Lilith and Nama visit Adam um, and bear his demonic children. Okay. So Lilith, divine black mother, divine black goddess, the all, Satan, right? Uh, Set, so on and so forth. And Nama representing Ple uh, pleasure, uh, pleasant energy, uh, energy, right? Uh, uh, represents sex, right? And we're talking about sex, not just on the lower nature. We're also talking about pleasure in the higher nature as well, too. But because Nama is closely tied to, to Lilith's lower nature, right? Which is the wild nature of, of the, as the wild aspect of nature itself. Um, she's there as pleasantry to activate the man's uh, divine sexual nature. So in order to, to, to truly have sex, truly um, to truly get into sex, to truly activate those sexual energies, okay, you need to, to, to start to activate and cultivate lust, pleasure, uh, um, desire. Okay, these are gateways of sexual energy, of sexual alchemy that you have to go through in order to activate that kundalini of lust, love, um, sexuality, in order to, to, to raise up the kundalini itself. You have to go through these gateways. Because, yeah, you can co cultivate kundalini, but you won't understand kundalini if you don't understand these aspects. You'll raise it up, and it will fry you. It will fucking fry you. You know what I'm saying? I know. I've, I've experienced the headaches. I've experienced the stagnations. I've, I've experienced... The, the boundaries and the, the, the burning up and the 